Welcome to The Organic Rose. I'm Chef Steve Rose. Join me on this incredible journey into our very green lifestyle. We're gonna have loads of fun cooking in the kitchen. We're gonna share our green living secrets with you. Together, we're gonna to explore a truly green lifestyle. I'm gonna give you the tools so you can do this at home. Being green is really a lot of fun. Hi, we're back at it. In my little outdoor kitchen, which I love cooking out here, looking out onto the mountains, it's just a, just a wonderful, comfortable place for me. I love being in the kitchen. We just picked some really nice, very fresh, organic red Swiss chard, some green Swiss chard as well. We're gonna make a wilted salad out of these two. And kale, lacinato kale actually, that we just picked out of our raised beds over here. Kind of a program, our landscaping here at the ranch is a lot of it's edible, what I call edible landscaping. So we get to look at it, visually enjoy it, and also enjoy it as we eat it. This particular kale is chock full of iron. Lots and lots of good iron for you. We're gonna go ahead and toss it in a little bit of olive oil. So let's go ahead and put a little bit of garlic in this bowl. Organic garlic, of course. This is California extra virgin olive oil organic. We put a little bit of that in there and just let some of that, some of the garlic oils infuse into the olive oil, give it a little bit of flavor. This is something not a lot of people know how to do, but it's basil infused salt. I take kosher salt, layer it with layers of fresh basil out of our garden, more salt, more organic basil all the way up to the top, and eventually the salt draws the oil out of the basil and infuses it into the salt. Ah, it smells so good. It works as a really good cooking salt or even a finishing salt. Today we're going to use it as probably both finishing and a cooking salt. So we're going to take this chard and get make sure I have enough fire going here. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and let that infuse for a bit. We're going to go ahead and work with our fish first. This is a lingcod and this is a red rock cod, and they're both line caught. We only use line caught fish. I don't believe in using drag netted fish, nor do we use any farm fish at all. So this is wild, and they were caught right out here over by Bodega Bay. We're gonna take some of the fish that I've already got filleted here, drizzle some more of this olive oil on it, just lightly, just to coat it so it doesn't stick to the grill. I like to leave the skin on especially on the red rock because when it gets on when it gets on the fire and it gets so nice and crispy this just gives you another just another added texture you know for me food is about enjoying besides the flavors the colors the textures and what it does for you that's Charlie talking over there off camera so I'm gonna go ahead and put the fire we're going to go ahead and do the skin side down, let it get nice and crispy. Let's put this over here. And inside the smoking chamber, I have prunings from our Merlot vines. And they're simply, I just soak them in water in a bucket, and then I go ahead and pull them out and put the wet cuttings into the smoking chamber. And it just creates uh, a very nice smoking cavity. So the fish is going to be getting some of this nice, nice smoke to it. And oh, I can smell it. It smells so nice. We're going to go ahead and proceed with the greens while the fish is cooking. So let's get some of the chard in here. You can do the chard first. Just get a little bit of olive oil on it. Because we don't want it sticking either to the grill. Open this puppy up, and it's going to go right on here. Get a little more of the chard. And right on the fire. You want to definitely turn it down. We don't want a lot of heat on it because you don't want to burn it. You can see it's starting to get a little bit of flame there already. Okay, let's switch it around go this way. The fish is doing well. We'll go ahead and put the kale on right now. Again, a little bit of olive oil. Excellent. And that's going over the smoke. Now I'm going to go ahead and 
grab some of the salt, the basil infused salt, and we're going to go ahead and it tastes really good. We're just going to go just gently on there, a little bit, not too much. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and put a little bit on the fish as well. Just a little bit. We can always add finishing salt later. So you don't want to get too much salt on there. Salt tends to draw out the moisture as well. So we don't want that, of course. We want everything to be nice and nice and juicy. Also, we picked we picked some nice sorrel. Sorrel is a member of the spinach family, but it has a real, it's a very nice, bright green, long, slender leaf, but it has a very lemon flavor to it. And for me, it makes a great sauce. We're gonna do a little bit of once the greens are done and the fish is done, we are going to do a little pesto with that. And that's going to go nicely on the fish. Really simple, not a lot involved. Let's flip this fish over. The fish is looking good. So we'll do that inside on the chopping block in the kitchen. The greens are almost done. What I'm going to do is go ahead and take them off the fire. And I'm just going to leave them over the smoking chamber. So it's just getting it's just getting a little bit of heat, not a lot of heat, because it's pretty much done cooking already. Mmm, that's nice. Oh, I can taste that basil salt in there as well. Talking about organics again, I just believe that farming organically to, to be able to raise these kind of vegetables, there's just so much more nutrition in there for you. And farming it organically is the way they were meant to be farmed, the way they were farmed 100,000 years ago. The greens are done. We'll give the fish a little bit, a couple extra minutes. Let's go ahead and I've got a little bit of uh, organic red onion here. It's out of our garden. It's called a Mars onion. And it's got a very mild flavor, very similar to shallots. So this is going to go ahead and go on to the greens and there again we're just going to get a little bit of that onion flavor there we don't want a lot since the onions are uncooked but they're just going to impart a little bit of flavor excellent I think we'll be able to go ahead and plate up the fish here soon there we go Nice and see how that's how crispy that skin is. It's just nice and crispy. It's just the way it should be. And the olive oil protects the fish from sticking to the grill, so it just releases it off the grill very easily. So we're going to go ahead and plate up the fish. Let's go ahead and give the greens a little flip here too. There we go. It's going to make a nice bed for the fish. And these are, like I like them, al dente. So they're not cooked all the way. It's definitely a knife and fork project, but it works. And leaving the, leaving the greens al dente like this, you're maintaining a lot of the vitamin structure in here. Some of the cell walls of the greens are not completely broken down, but that's fine. That's why we have a knife and a fork, and we can chew it well. Let's set this platter right over here. Take the rock. The link cut off, set it right on top, nicely. And then here's the other one with the skin on. Beautiful. My friend, my friend Mario would say, hey, Steve, that's a beautiful, beautiful. Anyway, there we have it. So sitting on a nice bed of fresh organic greens, the fish is just cooked nicely. It's gonna be just a little bit nice and soft in the middle, not cooked totally well done. I like my fish about medium. But it feels just like it's just ready. It's starting to pull apart a little bit. And I think you're going to enjoy that. We're going to go ahead inside now and make a little bit of that sorrel pesto. And it's just something we're going to go ahead and spread it right on the fish, just lightly. And give it a little bit of color, some nice flavor. Throw a couple of lemons on it, and it's a done deal. The sorrel is wonderful. It's just so lemony and so fresh. Come on, Charlie. We're going to go ahead and pick some. Charlie likes it too. So this again is another another example of edible landscaping. It's nice and pretty to look at, great colors, 
but it also tastes good. And I'll tell you, this sorrel is just so prolific here. It just continues to grow throughout the fall and the winter for us, is what, like, just like the kale. Here we go, Charlie gets one, and boy. So we're gonna go ahead and get going on our sorrel with pesto sauce. Always, always, always have a sharp knife. That's sharp. You stand a lot more chance of cutting yourself with a dull blade than a sharp blade, so make sure your knives are always in good, good condition. Here, we have a mortar and pestle. And inside the, this, if there's ridges. That's gonna help break down our product to make the pesto sauce in there. These are the sorrel leaves that Charlie and I picked a little bit ago. See the nice color? Just beautiful color and it's just so full of iron in here and it's just really good for you. Nice lemony bite to it. And here's the leaves. We got them stacked up and ready to do a chiffonade. It's going to have a little bit of roasted garlic, a little bit of just regular kosher salt. This, these are stems from the sorrel that we talked earlier about composting. Well, we're going to go ahead and this is going to go into our composting system. So here's the bucket that I use in our kitchen. And I just go ahead and take the stems and they go in here along with know, this morning's coffee grounds are in there and soon the fish bones will be in there as well. So all this kind of goes right into the compost and it gets taken outside on a daily basis and then it goes all gets mixed into our stream with everything from the restaurant. So here we've got the leaves of sorrel that are stacked nicely, nice and neatly. We're going to go ahead and cut the stems off. When you're cutting, always grab your French knife like this and keep the blade against the flat part of your fingers there. Never, you don't ever want to get your fingers underneath there because you can have an accident. So we're just going to go ahead and cut that, take these stems, and they are going to go into our compost. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and roll these up and create what's called a chiffonade. So roll up nice and tightly like you're rolling a cigar up. There and again, with the knife against your fingers nice and tight, we're going to shred it. So you get some nice, small, fine shreds in there. There we go. I can smell, I can smell the lemon coming up to me already. It's just getting released as we, as we, as the knife goes through the cell walls. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, this is a dough cutter. I use it to clean my table with. So it works really well. Oops. So we're gonna take, let's go with about half of that sorrel. And it's gonna go in the mortar and pest iron. And what's left here, this is gonna be a nice little garnish over the top of the fish. See how fine it is? It smells really good too. Mm, it tastes very good. Okay, now well, it's got a really bright lemon to it. In there, a little bit of salt, just a couple pinches. Remember, we've already salted the fish as well, so we don't wanna over salt it. People, if they want more salt, they can always add a little bit of salt at the table. I'm going to break this down a little bit to get it started. And remember, the salt's going to draw out the moisture, which is what we want because we're making a sauce now. Okay, a little bit of California extra virgin organic olive oil. There we go. That's going to make it a little bit easier to make the sauce. We're going to break it down, break it down, break it down. This is garlic from our garden, but it's been roasted really slowly for about 45 minutes to an hour in a 350 oven. And what we do is we take the entire flour of garlic, cut the points off, leave it in the skin, slide it in, on a sheet pan and it goes in the oven and it just roasts nice and slowly. We sprinkle a little bit of olive oil over the top of it. And that's pretty much it. So we're gonna add some garlic to this sorrel pesto now. When you roast garlic, it gets really sweet and it's not pungent, it's not hot, it's just a nice, very nice, nice sweet flavor to it. So let's get that in there with this. You can see the color, see how bright green that sorrel is. It's just, that's what organics are all about. It's not a doctored up color. We didn't add color to the fertilizers and that sort of thing. So 
So you just kind of keep working at it, working at it, and working at it. Another way to do it is you could do this as well in a Cuisinart, in a food processor if you'd like. It'll go faster that way. But I, I enjoy this. This to me is a nice relaxation time. And I think it brings, it makes a better product. Okay, we're gonna check it for salt. That's fine. So that's ready to go. So I went out back when nobody was looking and cut one of the lemons off one of our organic lemon trees. I picked this one a little bit green on purpose. You can see some of the yellow developing there. Bingo. Nice yellow color inside here. So it's not completely ripe yet, but I like it that way because the acids are higher and this dish just is calling for some acid to go right onto the fish. Just a little bit of juice in there. And that's gonna be a really nice contrast to the, to the sorrel. Because the sorrel, remember, the sorrel pesto is gonna have that lemony flavor already. So we're gonna put some of this not yet ripe lemon juice on it as well. So those will work well together. Put more juice on there so these can act as a garnish. Also, feel free if you have a lemon tree, lemon leaves are really good. They're very popular in a lot of Thai dishes and Indian dishes, but I love using them. You can just simply just tear the leaves. You can do a chiffonade like we did with the sorrel and then just kind of roll it up and cut through it with the knife and just sprinkle that in some soups or sauces right at the last minute. And it gives it a nice kind of a, a Thai little flair to it.